Hey, what's going on everybody? And I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, Swap some videos around tonight because I wanted to talk about something different. I originally had a different video planned for this evening. So this one's not going to be too, too long, but I do want to talk to y'all about what happened in Libya. Because I, like I said, I reached out to a friend. His family's in Libya. Fortunately, they're on the other side of the country. He said his family's safe, but friends and other people that the family know were affected and some are military or engineers, you know, responding to this. And they said it's bad. Um, so essentially this is one of those cases where physics killed people and y'all are probably going to laugh at that, but, uh, let, let's, um, what I'm going to do is try and explain it. I'm basically going to explain Bernoulli's equation on a YouTube video without an iPad to show you the, the schematics and hopefully you'll, you'll kind of understand the way I put it. So what you're dealing with is uh, it was a city and inland, if you will, I don't remember if it's north or east, but inland was a big reservoir that had been man-made uh, for water, obviously. And there was a large dam there. The dam had been built years ago under Gaddafi's regime in that country. Then below that dam, the, um, the river or the riverbed, if you will, tapers. And there was a secondary dam uh, several kilometers down and both of them were hydroelectric and then that dam went continued the river continued there and it went continued to the ocean and at the ocean where the river naturally came out um there was a the city that was built and it's it was built and spread out there and there was a dock and a harbor and the whole nine yards so these br dams were built years ago under Qaddafi. Qaddafi's been dead for over a decade. Oh, man, it must be 15 years. I don't remember how long he's been, he was killed. He was killed shortly after Saddam fell. So yeah, he's been gone for a while. Um, the dams, because of the civil war, because really nobody's in control of certain parts of the country, uh, the warlords have different areas. They have different governors. One guy claims to be president. Someone else says he's the prime minister, whatever. These dams require maintenance. The Hoover Dam was built in the 1930s. The reason it's still functioning outside of Las Vegas is because it's been maintained by some of the best engineers and companies and oversight from actual government agencies that are doing their job. And so it's been maintained for over, you know, you know, 100 years, almost 100 years. And it's a phenomenal work of engineering. This dam was not being taken care of. It probably had damage during the Civil War and the subsequent revolutions back and forth with the military groups. In any case, that dam structurally failed. Now, supposedly, local mayors and, and leadership have been telling the governors and the leaders, hey, this damn thing is fixing to fail. It's going to collapse. There's structural issues. It's leaking, etc. Nothing was really ever done. Uh, they reached out to the UN, which was pretty useless. You know, basically nothing happened. So here we are decades later, the dam is in disrepair and they get a massive rainfall. Um, I heard anywhere between eight to 15 inches. I don't know what happened, but the water all came into the reservoir at the same time. And this is where physics kill people. So Bernoulli's equation basically says the pressure, uh, pressure, temperature, velocity, of a fluid at this area here it equals some number and that number must unless you turn something into a plasma i won't go into that that number must be the same number here so in other words you have a pressure a volume a density and a velocity of fluid over here multiplied together equals some number that number is the same here but if the pressure or if the volume goes down you basically constrict the fluid, but if it's still moving at the same pressure and rate, the speeds, it's gonna speed up. Does that make sense? Think of a funnel, I'm probably not explaining this right. You have a bunch of fluid here, and let's say the funnel, instead of going to a small hole, it's a wide hole, but still you're funneling it in. The liquid here is trying to get out. What it does, it speeds up as it's leaving the funnel. 
That's why you pour the liquid in on top of a funnel, it comes out slow, but underneath it's moving really fast. It's because the water, the fluid is being constricted into a smaller space, but gravity doesn't change, right? Gravity is pulling the water downhill no matter what. So with gravity being the same, the volume's getting smaller. In order to get that fluid through, it speeds up. The same thing when you have a garden hose, right? You have the hose and it's just water coming out. You put your thumb on it or you tighten up the nozzle the water speeds up. You get that jet effect because you've constricted the cross-sectional area and the fluid moves forward. Okay, so all of you guys, hopefully by now, I, I explained it well enough that you guys get what I'm saying. So here's what happened. When that first dam failed, it was a very wide dam across a very wide reservoir and it was relatively deep. Assuming that canyon that the river had traveled through was about the same depth what you had was this large mass of water which had been reinforced by the rains all trying to squeeze into that valley well what happens is that that fluid is going to speed up and as the valley got narrower toward that second dam it was going at a phenomenal rate of speed. I'm talking miles per hour and possibly, let me see, from what I saw, it was it was substantial. It was a substantial increase from, uh, let me see if I can pull it up real quick because I had it and I lost it and I forgot the number, of course. Uh, so it was probably, the storm dumped a record 16 inches. Okay, here we go. 16 inches into the into the reservoir. And of course the reservoir then got overflowed. Uh, the city is actually called Derna, I'm sorry. I, sh I was gonna say Tobruk because of World War II, there was a battle fought there, but that is not correct, it was Derna. So um, this area normally only sees a couple of inches during this time of year. So the ground is hard. It does not absorb water like, say, Louisiana does or Carolinas do, right? So this stuff, the water went nowhere. It stayed at the surface, went to the reservoir, and collapsed the dam. Um, one of the engineers from the University of California, Irvine, said these landscapes are known to be a risk of ultra-hazardous flooding. And... Uh, Floods tend to strike suddenly, travel very quickly, and carry a lot of sediment and debris and will bulldoze anything in its way. So I'm trying to find where I had read earlier, but it was, all right, I can't find it, folks, sorry. But it was in terms of, you know, 20 mile an hour water flow, right? Um, oh, wow, now they're saying there's over 12,000 dead. So you think about it. This thing had only maybe 10, 15 miles to travel. It's going at least 10 to 15 miles an hour in a big wall. And it, this monkey's ass, he saw me trying to back up and he sped up. Stupid monkeys. Anyway, doofus ass. Uh, oh, anyway, Mr. Hard Hat with his crazy red hair over there. Anyway. Um, he did. He, you know who he looked like? That guy looked like Animal from the, from the Muppet Show. Remember him with the crazy red hair? And he's like, ah. Uh, he did. He looked like a savage. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, that may be why he drives all stupid. Who knows? Anyway, all right. Sorry. Distracted there. So in any case, think about this. You have a 30, 50 foot, maybe 100 foot wall of water traveling at 20, 20 miles an hour. That's moving. And it's headed toward a city in the middle of the night. By the time the workers who were fighting with the dam, trying to keep everything under control, the thing broke, right? First of all, they're trying not to get killed themselves. By the time they realized what had just happened and started notifying people, it was less than an hour before that water hit that city in the middle of the night. People were, it was almost like what happened in Maui. They were hearing the crashing, the screaming, the water, and were waking up, and there was water in their house already. And pretty much that size and that speed, when it hits a house, is gonna blow out the windows. If it doesn't completely flatten the house, it's gonna blow out the windows, 
and all of a sudden you're in five, six feet of water in your bedroom. Now think about that for a second. Five, six, seven feet of water, the average height in an American home is eight feet. You are now above the window gasping for air at the top of that room. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like this was phenomenally fast. These are the kind of things where you need to understand where you live and what your risks are. Um, a lot of us have said it before, but if you're dealing with an area that is flood prone, like New Orleans, that was a risk. Now, why wasn't it as bad in New Orleans? I'll tell you why, because when the Mississippi broke, the Mississippi is higher than the city. The levee broke in the immediate area. There was flooding, houses got destroyed, but it didn't get funneled into a smaller space. It got spread out into the basin where the city sits. So actually the water over, over distance slowed down, right? It came out fast, it destroyed that subdivision, but then it slowed down, but it still flooded. And it, it, the difference was it flooded a big massive area, but the water slowed down, so it wasn't flattening houses. The speed of this wall of water was much slower. Whereas here, it had sped up and then opened up into a city and went right into the sea. And it just absolutely flushed half the city into the, into the damn ocean. Um, as of right now, as of the time I'm recording this on a Thursday, the 14th of September, they're now estimating 12,000 people are known to be dead and that's going to go up that's not including injuries that's not including people who have delayed death because of heart attack or whatever that's not talking about illness and disease that's inevitably going to happen because people have to pee they shit things are going to die in that water and it's going to contaminate the water and you're going to get the cholera you're going to get all those diseases that show up um and infect people's open wounds and they're gonna be open wounds. It's just so many, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Same thing in Maui, it happened so freaking fast, people could not escape. Um, so understanding your area, understanding where you are and what can happen and understanding if you live down, down river from a dam, I would go, look at that dam, put eyes on it, understand where the water flow is going to go, and more importantly, understand uh, where you need to go if something happens. So folks, I want you to take lessons from this. What happened there is tragic, and I'm, I'm heartbroken because I know people from that country. It's They're good people. They're like anywhere else, right? They're just making a living, raising their families, and these poor folks were devastated. But I want you guys to keep in mind that these are the kind of things that when they happen, happen so fast, it's hard to react. You could prep all you want. And when you wake up at two in the morning and there's four feet of water in your bedroom, shit, right? Now what? So understanding the risks help you plan so that you can put things in place in advance of something happening. I don't know if I said that right, so I'll say it again. If you understand what your risks are in a certain area, you can plan in advance and if necessary, place things in advance before something actually happens. So anyway, just some thoughts, folks. I hope to see you all next week. God bless and Godspeed, but take, a, take that away with you guys. Be safe.